Welcome to Bites by MSDN. This is Billy Hollis. My good friend Brad Abrams is here today. Talk to us a little bit about some of the, the interesting things in the WPF and Silverlight world and how that's going to integrate into Visual Studio. Tell me, tell, sort of set the context, let folks yep. know what your role is on the team. So I'm a product unit manager within the developer framework team. Um, and uh, you know, part, part of what the overall team does is we, you know, we build out Silverlight, the, the full .NET framework, the mm -hmm. designers for, for Silverlight and for ASP.NET. That to me, being in the WPF Silverlight world a lot, the yeah. whole designer experience thing, it's like, that's a tough challenge. It is, for, it is a tough challenge. You know, one of the things we have to balance is that, and I know you know this, like, the, the, the WPF and Silverlight are very powerful platforms that you do very expressive things. I say degrees of freedom. You have yeah, lots exactly. of degrees lots of freedom. Lots of degrees of freedom. But then we have a set of, a large set of developers that, um, that need that, that need some guidance in how to use mm -hmm. that freedom, right? That that maybe aren't as interested in going in and handwriting a bunch of XAML, uh, you know, in the in XML right. format to mark that up. They'd really like to be able to build out their UIs in a very simple way, but still get something attractive. Right, you something I mean? that goes beyond what the UI used to do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now I know we've got some nice things in Visual Studio 2010 yep. in the WPF space, the, where you're able to choose resources and yep. styles and yep. things, yep. which I think allows plug in templates and stuff. That's right, that's what, right. Have we got other interesting yeah, things so going on? Yes, so we bring all of those advances forward to Silverlight now with mm -hmm. the Silverlight 4 release that we talked about at PDC. Oh, that's good. Um, so all of that now, so if you're familiar with what we've done for WPF, it comes forward. So like you mentioned, the resource uh, binding's good. And then data binding, I know I always struggle mm -hmm. with the data binding expressions. So now we have a great ways to build up the data binding in a very visual way. Some designer ways of establishing that's right, the that's binding. That's right, you can just go, so there's two ways to do it. One way, well there's actually three, I guess. There's one way is there's a dialog box that comes up and you can actually check, hey, this mm -hmm. is two way, here's the string format to use, yeah, here's the yeah. source to bind to, and it builds up the data binding expression. That's one way. The other way that I'm very excited about is the data sources window. So if you're right. familiar with, I know you've done some WinForms programming right, in the past. Right. The data sources window was very popular there. Now we've brought it forward for both WPF and Silverlight. Um, and then with the Silverlight support for the data sources window, whether your data is coming from SharePoint, from a WCF service, oh, yeah. or from a RIA oh. service, you get that data in the data sources window. Just drag it in. And, and then start. you just drag it in and uh, there's a list box there that it right. drags in as you go and start customizing it, applying your templates. And yeah. it's really, it gets up to speed very quickly with it. Well, that's, I, I like to hear about the hooks to the RIA services, yeah, yeah, making yeah. that as simple as everything else because, exactly. I mean, I've been sort of looking at that yeah, from the yeah, beginning yeah, yeah. and it fills a pretty big hole. Yeah. Uh, well, people should know, I guess, what, if you had to state sort of the goal of RIA services, yeah. the target, how would you express well, that in kind of an elevator speech way? Well, I guess the way I'd say it is, you know, for the last 10 years, um, Microsoft has really been evangelizing kind of two-tier development. That's right, mm -hmm. my database and my UI. Yeah. yeah. I have my database and I have ASP.NET web forms. I have my database and I have a WinForms app. Um, and really what the move to Silverlight and, and to some extent Ajax as well is really bringing about this end-tier world and that's the world of web services right. and WCF and, and the complexity meter goes to 10 as soon as you start doing that. You're right? in-tier whether you want to be it, or not. Exactly, you whether you want to be or not. That's where we're kind of, um, that's where the industry is moving. So yeah. what we did is we took a step back and we thought about, the, one thing I really like about the RIA services project is we looked at the problem end to end. We said, end to end, what's hard about this? There's platform pieces that are hard. There's configuration that's hard. There's yeah. deployment, there's management, there's tooling that's hard. And we just addressed it across the board. And uh, just poured, sort of put the plumbing yeah. hidden as you could, put tooling on top of that's it. That's right, that's right. So we're, we're built all on top of WCF. So like if you wanted that complexity, and mm -hmm. sometimes you need it, uh, you can go in there and get Pull that complexity. Pull up floorboards, get down exactly. with you the plumbing. can go do that. But if what you want to do is just build your business app, and mm -hmm. um, it's very easy to go create an entity framework model, put a domain service on top of that, and then you have the data sources window, and you just drag it out and get your your, your UI, yeah. and you're up and going. So we hope that kind of tooling and that kind of plumbing uh, abstraction would yeah. really help the adoption rate, help people move into the Silverlight world yeah, a lot more yeah, naturally. Yeah. So I think it'll help, I think there's a lot of people that have that know they need to move to that next step, mm -hmm. that know they need to move to that RIA pattern, and, and I think this is just gonna help make them a lot more successful well, doing You know that. I'm a, as big a proponent of rich internet apps yep. as, yep, as it's possible to be. So, well, thank you, Brett. Thanks for, for giving us that, that, that well, it was a pleasure basic, to... basic idea of it. This is Billy Hollis with Bytes by MSDN, and I hope you've gotten a little bit of idea from this for some of the exciting things going on as many of us get the opportunity to move to these rich internet applications.